This is Twit. Last Wednesday, during Black Hat Europe 2020, researchers from Forescout Technologies presented their paper titled How Embedded TCP IP Stacks Breed Critical Vulnerabilities. Um, in their teaser synopsis for the conference, they said, in the past few years, there's been a rise in critical vulnerabilities affecting embedded TCP IP stacks, which had remained undiscovered for over a decade. The direct, unauthenticated, and sometimes cross-perimeter network exposure of these stacks, the often privileged portions of the system they run in, and their position at the top of opaque supply chains, complicating vulnerability management efforts make for a highly dangerous mix resulting in periodic waves of critical vulnerabilities affecting billions with a B of devices across industry verticals. But contrary to what many assume, the fragility of these fundamental components isn't limited to specific vendors or older closed source stacks alone. In this talk, we will present over a dozen, and actually, whoa, well over, over a dozen new vulnerabilities, and they, of course, mean newly discovered vulnerabilities, in multiple widely used embedded TCP IP stacks deployed in everything from networking equipment and medical devices to industrial control systems. We will discuss the nuances in their exploitability and potential impact and demonstrate a proof of concept against a yet to be disclosed high profile target. In addition, we will present the first quantitative and qualitative study into vulnerabilities affecting embedded TCP IP stacks, showing a clear pattern to the affected components and features, as well as the root causes of the vulnerabilities that affect them. Finally, we will provide concrete advice on how to mitigate and manage vulnerabilities affecting billions of devices in the absence of centralized patching and notification efforts. And of course, the absence of centralized patching and notification is one of our big hobby horses on the podcast because, you know, like it is such a problem. So needless to say, their presentation is quite a meal. Um, that's the introduction to their 47 page paper. I've got a link to it in the show notes, but, um, stepping back a bit, they coined the name amnesia 33 because they uncovered a set of 33 vulnerabilities collectively impacting four different open source TCP IP protocol stacks, one known as micro IP, the second Fnet, the third is Pico TCP, and the fourth is Nutnet. They are commonly used in IoT, Internet of Things, and embedded devices. As a consequence of improper memory management, Successful exploitation of these flaws could cause memory corruption, allowing attackers to compromise devices, execute malicious code, perform denial of service attacks, steal sensitive information, and even poison DNS cache memory. In real world scenarios, the attacks could play out in various ways, disrupting the functioning, for example, of a power station to result in a blackout or taking a smoke alarm and temperature monitor systems offline by using the DOS vulnerabilities, meaning it's, as we know, trivial to crash these things. And so if you've got an embedded device that doesn't have a watch, a so-called watchdog timer, which is able to notice that the device hung and then perform a physical restart, you know, well-designed systems tend to really inexpensive things just don't. They just that doesn't occur to them. That would cost an extra penny to put into the hardware. So ah, we'll, we'll save that. Um, many millions of devices from an estimated 158 different vendors are vulnerable collectively to these Amnesia 33 discoveries. 
with the possibility of remote code execution allowing an adversary to take complete control of a device and using it as an entry point on a network of IoT devices to then move laterally. And of course, we've also been talking a lot about lateral movement thanks to the zero login flaw that allows somebody that gets into an enterprise to, to easily compromise the, uh, the Active Directory system and you know move laterally throughout the network. Uh, this allows them to establish persistence, co-op the compromised systems without any outward appearance of compromise, thus setting up shop. And of course, the, our topic for today uh, is, well, as, we're, as we'll see, is big on that. So if we imagine that nation state actors are greedily mopping up all available exploits everywhere they appear, then this research from Forescout was likely greeted with a great deal of mopping because this is, you know, the, the IoT devices are exploding in number. Forescout said that, quote, Amnesia 33 affects multiple open source TCP IP stacks, yep, those four, that are not owned by a single company. This means that a single vulnerability will exist across multiple code bases, multiple development teams, multiple companies and products, which presents significant challenges to patch management. You know, there's not one person to notify. And oftentimes these things are forked. They'll take, so thank you very much, take the source code repository in, in, you know, in-house and then do their own modifications from there, they're, thereby never getting the benefit of the original repository's fixes, which these guys would be happy to provide. So they say, because these vulnerabilities span a complex IoT supply chain, Forescout captioned uh, its, uh, oh, I'm sorry, cautioned, it's as challenging to determine which devices are affected as they are hard to eradicate, right? Because, you know, they're, they're just embedded. You don't know which TCP IP stack is in that smart thermometer or in that smart plug or in the, the remote webcam. That's not, it just like comes with it. It's embedded. So uh, they stem from out of bound rights, buffer overflows, lack of input validation, you know, basically running the gambit of a well-meaning, but casually designed, oh, look, uh, it works. You're welcome to use it. And unfortunately, it's got lots of problems. Uh, these guys found 33 different ones. So, you know, there are critical remote code vulnerabilities in this micro IP, Pico IP, and NutNet. Each, they have been disclosed, they're publicly known, each of them has a CVSS score of 9.8. So yeah, remote code vulnerability, trivial to exploit. Some of the vendors who do utilize these stacks are being responsible. Vendors such as a very well-known microchip technology that they're using this open source stack and Siemens whose products are affected by these vulnerabilities have released security advisories about them. But again, that's, that's the exception to the rule, right? You know, there's two companies that leaves 156 others. As Forescout put it, embedded systems such as IOT and operational technology devices tend to have long vulnerability lifespans. Okay. There, there, there's a new term to coin long vulnerability lifespans meaning, right, they never get patched. They said, resulting from a combination of patching issues, long support life cycles, and vulnerabilities trickling down, highly complex and opaque supply chains, or sometimes not trickling. As a result, vulnerabilities in embedded TCP IP stacks have the potential to affect millions, if not billions, of devices across vertical markets, and tend to remain a problem for a very long time. The problems disclosed were severe enough for the CISA, you know, our U.S. CISA, 
to get involved and to urge awareness. But that didn't appear to have much impact when they urged companies to update against the Microsoft Zero logon vulnerability earlier this year, asking IoT vendors, you know, random vendors, probably most in China, to patch their unpatchable devices seems a clearly doomed exercise in futility. So what's our course of action? What's our takeaway? My feeling is that we must treat our IoT gadgets with the assumption that they are compromised and rigorously relegate them to their own isolated networks. If you're able to access your various IoT devices from outside your home, then it's clear that you and they do not need to share a common network. Your untrusted IoT LAN should coexist with your trusted LAN, but they should not have any contact with one another and they don't need it. Uh, you know, we're not, I'm not suggesting that we're seeing like, you know, broad based uh, intrusions. We're not at this point, but uh, we're, the, I, I will not be surprised if there isn't some sort of, you know, IOT apocalypse <laughs> at some point where, where these things, they're just like, there's they're such a critical mass of them all connected out of this country that they just don't represent such low hanging fruit that it will be impossible for them not to be abused. Let them, you know, attack each other on their own land segment. Don't let them get to your main operating uh, land where you've got your PCs. And as I said, if you can change your, te your, your home temperature from when you're, you know, out roaming around away from the house or turn plugs on or off and things, you're already on a separate network. That demonstrates that your, your trusted LAN does not need to have contact with your untrusted IoT LAN. And it, the, this, this need for network segmentation I would argue, ha has never been greater.